Welcome for this weekly recap of the blockchain news. If you are new here, I'm Julian and at Eat the Blogs, I help Web2 developers transition into Web3. Quick announcement, I am launching a new bootcamp to become a Web3 developer. It will last 12 weeks and there will be a weekly call with me to ask me any questions you want. And at the end, I will help you to optimize your online profile to help you find your first Web3 job. If you want to apply and see the curriculum, you will find the links down below. There will be 50 people maximum and we have already booked 25 people and it will start on March 7th. Ether saw a slight fluctuation in value and is currently at $2,600. The Ethereum community called out Coinbase and Kraken for their lack of validator diversity for ETH2 staking. And as a response, Kraken promised greater client diversity and Coinbase added support for Lighthouse remote signing. The Ukraine DA is a new DA created to support the Ukrainian army and they have raised $3 million in ETH. Canada is a new DA for the cannabis industry. Magic Eden, a marketplace based on Solana, plan to launch a DA to establish operational rules and make key decisions. The DeFi market cap tumbled to $68 billion amid the Ukraine war crisis. CeFi meets DeFi as Celsius Protocol launched a $30 million lending pool on Maple Finance. Cardano attracted $50 million to DeFi project in the last 30 days. The total value lock reached $117 million. HackVC raised a $200 million fund to back early stage crypto startup. Fastbreak Labs raised $6 million in a seed round. The NFT platform Ucolex raised $10 million led by Animoca Brand, a portfolio company that already invested in many other NFT projects. The crypto journalist Laura Shin believe Austrian programmer Toby Hainish was behind the infamous DAO hack in 2016 where $11 billion was stolen. A Coinbase vulnerability was disclosed and a 250 bounty was paid. A vulnerability was found on Polygon, a $75,000 bounty was paid. A new NFT project was released that represents the works of Picasso. A series of phishing attacks was discovered targeting OpenSea users. Isotil, an NFT metaverse platform, added support for NFTs on Arbitrum. Ukraine officially started accepting Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Tether donations for its ongoing war. The password management platform OnePassword collaborates with Phantom Wallet on API service. You can now deploy smart contracts with MetaMask using the Truffle dashboard with both Truffle and Hat Hat. Replit, a web-based IDE, added support for Solidity. A new Ruby library was released to support signing with Ethereum. Before we finish, quick reminder, I'm launching a new bootcamp to become a Web3 developer. It will last 12 weeks and there will be a weekly call with me to ask any question you want. And at the end, I will help you to optimize your online profile to find your first Web3 job. It will start on March 7th. And if you want to apply and see the curriculum, you will find the links down below. That's it for today. Bye.